Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today I'm talking about the MAC or the marginal abatement cost and the marginal damage function curves from environmental economics. Just a brief introduction to that graph and what's going on. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So the big idea here is that we've got a factory, it's making stuff, and in terms of making that stuff, in the process of making that stuff, it's going to generate some air pollution, which we're going to call emissions. Could be water pollution too, just using air pollution as an example. And so what we're going to say is we got this town, and that town is sort of suffering because of this air pollution. They've got to wear masks, they can't go outside as much, they're having additional health issues. So that's sort of the impact or the damages from this air pollution. This factory can choose to remove or clean up some of this pollution or reduce their emissions. Their act of reducing emissions is what we're going to call abatement. So this is sort of the setup. And now we're going to take this into more of like a supply and demand graph, very related to the externality video that I've recorded before. It's going to pop up in the right corner if you've got any questions about that. But let's go ahead and start looking at this graph. And so we're going to do a marginal analysis because we're economists. And so we're going to have dollars on the y-axis and emissions or E on the x-axis. And again, we're going to be sort of thinking about market equilibrium versus social optimal and Pareto optimal. And so the first thing I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw this downward sloping curve like this. And I'm going to call this the marginal abatement cost curve. The reason I'm going to call this the marginal abatement cost curve is because what you can think about on this y-axis is if this right here, this point in orange, this is the point which I'm going to call full emissions. And that is the point at which the factory is not doing any abatement at all. They're just producing as they normally would, and that's the amount of emissions that they would have otherwise. Okay, and so what's going to happen is because from left to right, I've got more and more emissions, right? Emissions is going up in this direction. Well, because abatement is the cleaning up or the reduction of emissions, that means that as I move left to right, abatement, in which I'm going to do in pink, abatement is going down. And so what's happening as I move left to right is my marginal abatement cost is going down because I'm abating less pollution. So abating that first ton, I'm going to say, is much cheaper than abating that last ton. And in fact, at this point right here, this is zero emissions. This is actually going to be full abatement because at this point I have zero emissions. And so if I have zero emissions, that must mean that I abated all my emissions. And so that's how I get that point right here. Maybe I'll also say zero emissions just to be clear. So this is the setup I've sort of got on the x-axis with this marginal abatement cost curve. Now on the other hand, what I'm gonna have is this upward sloping curve here. This video is called MAC and MDF. So of course this must be the MDF curve or the marginal damage function curve. Why is it going up? Why is it upward sloping? Well, as I get more emissions, the air is getting dirtier and dirtier. And we're going to say that the extra impacts on people just get worse and worse with every unit of emissions, given that you already have so much air pollution. So that's what it's going to look like. So what you can see if you're just looking at this graph, you're like, okay, well, I remember from micro or any econ class that when these touch, this is probably the optimal level of emissions. So maybe this is what we're going to call E star. And so that means that the difference between full emissions and E star, or this guy right here, or A star. Okay, and now we got to think about, well, what's happening sort of without this perfect world? What is the factory going to do? Well, you might think about it and say, well, the factory has no incentive to clean up their pollution, especially because reducing or abating their emission is costly. So it probably should be the case that we wind up right here. And we got to think about why that is sort of using those terms of marginal private benefit and marginal private cost that we used before in that externality video. Again, that's sort of linked above in the top right right about now. Okay, so we've got this MDF curve. And generally, we're going to say that costs slope upward. This is a marginal social cost. How can you know that? Well, this is the cost of people of having to breathe this dirty air. So it makes sense that this is sort of a marginal social cost curve. Now this marginal abatement cost curve, this is actually going to be a marginal private benefit of emitting. Why is it a private benefit? Because the factory gets to avoid these costs if they emit more, sort of feels a little backwards. One thing you can use to remember this is that in general, private benefits or social benefits are diminishing, right? This way we have diminishing marginal utility. We've got a downward sloping line. It's probably gonna be a benefit curve. In this case, it's the private benefit of emissions. Again, because that firm has a benefit of not having to pay the abatement costs. Okay, so now we've got a marginal social cost. We've got our marginal private benefit. We're also going to say that this MAC curve is equal to the marginal social benefit. 
we're going to say there's no extra social benefit of abating or emissions out of this MAC curve. And so because we've already got a marginal damage function, so now we need a marginal private cost curve. And we know that in order for this full emissions to be our market emissions or our EM, then what needs to happen is our marginal private benefit needs to equal our marginal private cost at that point. How do we do that? Well, if you think about it, if we look at this x-axis, and I'm going to draw over it in purple for a second, if we think about this x-axis, this is really the marginal private cost to factories of emitting because they just don't care. They're just going to release those emissions, cost them nothing in terms of letting their smoke go out of their smokestack. Their only cost would be if they choose to clean it up or abate some of their emissions. But if they choose to do nothing, it doesn't cost them anything to emit. And so we have this marginal private cost curve that's at the x-axis. And so when does MPC equal MPB? That's right here at full emissions. And what happens when marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost? Just like we had before in the externality scenario, we have E star right here. So that's sort of how this graph works with emissions on the x-axis. I'm going to do the exact same thing now with abatement on the x-axis instead of emissions. Okay, so now I've got abatement on the x-axis as opposed to emissions. And so one thing you have to think about is, well, if I think about a marginal abatement cost, in the first graph, my marginal abatement cost went down as emissions went up. But now abatement is going up as I read from left to right, which means that emissions, as I move from left to right, are going down. So now if I think about the marginal abatement cost curve, well, I know that as I move from left to right, abatement is going up and emissions are going down. Now before, my marginal abatement cost curve was downward sloping, but really what was happening is if I read this from right to left, as my abatement was zero, I started at zero, and then as my abatement crept up, my marginal abatement cost curve also went up because as I was abating or reducing my emissions by more and more, the cost to reduce another unit of pollution just kept going up, which means on this graph with abatement on the x-axis, my marginal abatement cost curve is going to start at zero. That's zero abatement. And it's going to go up and it's going to look like this, where this is my marginal abatement cost curve or my marginal private cost curve. Because again, this point right here at zero, this is zero abatement. Sorry, that's a zero. This is zero abatement, which means full emissions. And of course, what I've got right here, wherever this curve stops, this is going to be the full abatement point. And full abatement means that I have no more emissions. So this is full abatement or zero emissions. Which means at this point with zero emissions, my marginal damage function is gonna be exactly zero because I have no pollution. And as I go from right to left, my marginal damage function increases. My marginal damage function increases because as abatement goes down from right to left, that means that emissions is going up because again, Right here, this is marginal damages at full emission. So this is my MDF curve, which I'm gonna put over here just to keep it a little readable. And so this marginal damage function, this is still a social thing. So this is still marginal social benefit. And so we're gonna say that this MAC, there are no other costs other than this abatement cost. So this is also a marginal social cost, which means we're right back here where this is our A star right here. But again, we have emissions going down so this is the difference between full abatement and wherever we have A star, which means this right here is our E star. This is the amount of emissions that we're gonna let happen in this market. Now again, we have to think about what's gonna happen in order to make this point where full emissions are competitive equilibrium. So once again, we're gonna turn our attention to this X axis. And we're gonna say that this X axis is going to be the marginal private benefit of abating. Because again, there's no benefit to firms of being able to abate or reduce their emissions. They have no incentive to do so because their marginal private benefit of abating is zero. Their private cost of emissions is zero. And so they just don't want to abate at all. And so that's why in equilibrium and competitive equilibrium, we get to zero abatement or full emissions just like we did before. So no matter which thing you put on the X axis, abatement or emissions, you're telling the same exact story the only difference is which curve is sloping up or down, what's a benefit versus what's a cost. And again, I think it's just easiest if you try to tell yourself stories in order to help keep this straight in your head. So if there's questions or confusion, please feel free to drop me a comment below.
But if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like this video, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.